Happy Easter, Easter everyone. everyone. Great to be with you today. My name's Ross Abraham, my incredible wife, Kathy, and we are the lead pastors of Elevation Church. Welcome to Elevation Online and a big hello to everyone who's joining with us today. Whether you're from one of our Elevation locations or another INC church across Australia or even the world, we are so honoured to have you join with us as we celebrate Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, it's a fantastic day to remind ourselves it's all about Jesus rising from the dead to give us a second chance in life, to give us a new life or as the Bible says that we can become a new creation. We have a great service planned for you. First up, the worship team from our Hills location is going to lead us in some songs. So wherever you are, we pray that you will lean in and allow God to speak to you. Come on, come on. Come on wherever you are right now, we're gonna praise God. So good.
Yours may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light away, God, you light away. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save.
Elevation just want to encourage us today in our giving. You know, there was a strategy of the enemy in the Old Testament when they were going to possess a land that often they would throw rocks into the well and throw rocks through the city to destroy the city. You see, if you were to throw rocks into a well, it clogs up the water supply and that's how they could take on a city. That was, that was an enemy's strategy. And you know, as I was reading that, there's a story in Two Kings about that. But as I was reading it, I thought, isn't that the same with us today? The, the well that is inside of us, the well of the Holy Spirit, that life-giving well that we are born into when we become Christians, often gets clogged up with things like anxiety. It can get, it can get clogged with depression. Or a big one that we're facing and have been facing for the last few months is this big fat one here clogged up with corona. And we get to that stage, let me not lose my where you can see as a well is filled up with rocks, the water supply is actually extinguished. And I just feel that in this season of our life and in this season uh, in, in our church and for Elevation and beyond, I feel that the enemy's strategy is to clog up our well. It's to clog up the rocks of anxiety, the rocks of depression, the rocks of I, I need to hoard for myself rather than give. I wanna keep it all to myself because I don't know what's around the corner. All these things that clog up the flowing of the life-giving Spirit of God in us stops us from being the givers that we're called to be. Can I encourage you today that you would take out and remove those rocks from your life and say there enough is enough. It is time for me to come back into that place as, as, as Jesus when he came to Lazarus. And, and as he went into that grave, what did he say? Remove the stone. It is time for us to remove the rocks and the things that are clogging the giving in our life and we be, so that we can be all that God is destined to be. And um, I just pray today that you remove the rocks from your well and allow the life-giving Spirit of God to flow freely again because it's a time that people need us more than ever. There are two ways you can currently give to Elevation. Number one is push pay. Simply text the number that is on the screen and follow the prompts. Or number two, you can go to our website and follow the giving link for your location. But right now, it is my absolute joy and privilege to introduce a dear, dear friend of ours. And that's Pastor Daryl from our Hills location. And he's gonna come and present the word today. So lean in and love you guys heaps. Well, welcome wherever you're watching from, whether you're at home or if you're watching from your mobile device, a big hey from us. So glad that we have technology that we could be together wherever we are in the world. See, our church buildings might be closed, but church isn't. And today is a special Sunday because it is Easter Sunday. How good is that? And that we can still celebrate the greatest day in all of human history together, wherever you're watching from. So hopefully your kids, if you do have kids at home, hopefully they're already nagging you for their Easter eggs. If you don't have an Easter egg, just go to the fridge, grab an egg, they'll have no clue. Well, we're gonna have some fun today. I wanna jump into the Easter account and my prayer is that you'll get something fresh today, something brand new on this memorable Sunday that can revolutionize and change your world. So let's jump in, Luke 24, Luke 24, uh, from verse 1 to 12. It says this, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they prepared. But they found that the stone was rolled away from the tomb. 
Then they went in and didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed and confused about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. So, so we see here a group of women, two Marys, another lady called Joanna, and a group of other girlfriends. Now they were followers of Jesus. They'd followed him everywhere. They'd seen his journey. They believed what he said, but they followed him all the way to Friday where Jesus was crucified on the cross. Now, for them, they had witnessed their God die, their dreams, their hopes. Just, just put yourself in their shoes for a moment and imagine the disappointment, the feeling of, wow, this is, this is over. This is a full stop. And I tell you how I know that. It's because the Bible says here, that they had spices and they were taking it to the tomb because they had to cover the decomposing body, a little bit of old spice, you know, just to make sure that the smell was all good. But when they get there, they get greeted by angels. And these angels then basically say to them that Jesus hasn't just woken up from a nap, but Jesus has come back from the dead, that he is alive. Now, whenever I read this account and whenever I think about Easter, um, there's so many profound moments, like just all of that. Think about that. Imagine that in a Hollywood movie, that that would be out of this world. But there's a few profound things in there, but there's one thing that for me, I found so profound whenever I think about it. You, you know, think about it, this, angelic hosts, you know, like angels being in the room. Uh, yeah, that's kind of profound. I think we all would say that's kind of profound. Equally, an empty tomb. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty profound as well. But you know, the thing that gets me every time, whenever I think about the Easter account, is, is this thought. Why did they open the door? Like, think about it for a moment. Like, why did they open the door, and then why did they leave the door open? You know, I, I, I read ahead a few chapters, and, and you see that Jesus, Jesus was, you know, with his, his disciples. He's come back from the dead, and his disciples were in a house. They were waiting for Jesus. And, and then Jesus literally walks through the wall. He walks through the wall. He doesn't ring a doorbell. He doesn't knock on his friend's door. He walks through the wall. So, so why, why did he need a door to get out of the tomb? You know, I remember the first time when I was young and my mom, my mom gave me house keys. I got the house keys for a house that I didn't pay the mortgage for. It was a good day. And maybe you remember that moment. You just felt like you had power. I felt like I was Frodo with the ring. Like I just had this authority. And my mom gave me the full process. She's like, okay, Daryl, now let me make sure that you understand that if you have these keys, you need to be able to lock the door properly. So you've got to pull the door closed and then you've got to lock it. Remember, Daryl, pull the door and then <laughs> lock it. Now, for me, the next day I went to school and I thought I did the process right. I thought I'd pulled the door closed and locked it. I went off to school, had a great day, came back. And I remember walking up the driveway and seeing the door wide open. I remember just freaking out, thinking, hold on a second, someone has burgled our house. I went straight in, I looked for the valuables, straight away for my Super Nintendo. That's the valuables. And then all of my items, they were all there. That was what counted. Everything was good. And so I sat down to watch TV whilst no one else was there. And as I sat down, I began to scratch. I began to sneeze. I began to cough. And my allergies began to flare up. And now I'm thinking about it. My allergies usually only flare up when there's a feline cat around, when there is a devil in the room, right? And, and lo and behold, I heard this purring noise behind my neck. And there was a stray cat in my house, like in my front room. This thing was so comfortable. It's wearing a bathrobe. It's like, this is his home now. And I remember, I'm like, I've got to usher this thing out the house because my mom, she's a short, angry Caribbean woman and she might cut that thing up and put it in a stew. So I'm like, I'm going to clear the room. And so I get it out and mom gets home. And as she gets home, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to keep anything from mom. And so I told her and she said to me, 
after the stern talking to his parents understand, she then looked me in the eyes and she said something profound. She said, Daryl, do you not realize that an open door is an invitation? That an open door is an invitation. And now I've come to the realization that the tomb door wasn't opened to let Jesus out. No, the tomb door was opened to let us in so that we could witness the only tomb that's famous for what it doesn't contain, the only tomb that has the signature of God on it. This is the only tomb that has seen life come from death. And this is the very heart of God today on Easter Sunday, that we would step into the tomb and it would be more than just a story, more than just a historical moment, but the resurrection of Jesus would become a reality for each and every one of us today. In verse 5, we see the other moment as they they walk in and they encounter this open door and they get inside and the angels engage in a dialogue. And they say this in verse 5, then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Now, we can see they are going to a graveyard. I think it's very clear that they are seeking the dead among the dead. And see, you've got to understand this in Jewish custom, right? On the first day of anyone's death, the first day, the moment they die, that's clinical death. So that's when the doctors say, yep, pronounced dead. Now, in Jewish culture and Jewish custom in the day, it was only after three days where they pronounce you Jewish dead. So they're coming on the third day with spices, symbolic that they're saying he is dead there. They are getting there with the intention of going to a graveyard to see a dead man. And so I think that the question that the angels were asking, were more of, it was more of a thought-provoking question. I think the question that they were asking wasn't just for the ladies in the room back then. I think it was a question for each and every one of us, a question that should resonate in every single room under the sound of my voice, that why are we seeking life among dead things? Why are we looking for life among things that do not bring life? Why are we searching for things that can offer existence and being from things that don't have life in them? And so often many people and, and, and we do and I do at times, we, we seek to find this life, the meaning, uh, the success, the, the feeling of a rush, the feeling of having a pulse. And we seek all of these things from actually dead things. And, you know, more often than not, I think it's less about actually the choice between life and death, but it's more a choice between existence and death. More often than not, many of us, it would be a choice between just existing at work or or just existing through this pandemic, or I'm just going to exist through my life. I'll just make it to the end and say I made it. I I survived. But there's so much more in Jesus. And the open tomb today on Easter Sunday shows us this, that there is the ability of life, that you can come back to life, that he can give, as John 10, 10 says, he can give life, life to the max, life to the full. There is an ability in Jesus that you will never find in anything or anything else. You won't find it in substances. You won't find it in money. You won't find it in people. It can only be found in Jesus. This is the first tomb to offer life. And see, equally, I think the angel's question was trying to kick them out of the room. I think the angel was just like, okay, we're done. We're done now. You, you guys need to get out of the room. See, uh, for those who know me, you'll know that I can sometimes be a bit clumsy. Like, I lose things all the time. Just this year, I have lost my wallet four times. Yes, crazy. I know. And so my wife, she's pregnant too. So there's, there's, there's love, but equally a cocktail of chemicals equally that's raging in my wife. And so whenever I lose things, let's, not, let's just say that she's not always happy about it. And so she's come to the point now because whenever I lose something, the first person I go to is my wife. Even if she's not there, I'm like, babe, where is this? It's like, you know, men, you understand if you've got a spouse, it's like they're like the Holy Spirit, man. They know everything. It's like you're all knowing. And I'll go to her, my wife, the first time she finds out, I'll be like, babe, where's my wallet? Wallet. She looks at me, she tells me where, where my wallet is, and then her response um, is basically go get your wallet. And now I have a moment, I call it the man moment. The man moment is standing, pausing, and thinking. We do it often. 
and I would stand, I'd think about where I put my stuff, and I'm processing what she said. And so then my wife would often respond with this, what are you doing still standing here? Now, my wife isn't asking that question because she wants me to reply with like, well, them, the reason why I'm standing here is because I'm processing exactly what you're saying. I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna eat tonight as well. And I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm losing weight right now. You know, Virgin, my gym is closed down, so I need to try and work out somehow. If I was to say that to my wife, I think she would do something that would mean I wouldn't be standing here today. And so the question isn't for a response, the question is for them to move. And I believe the angels were doing the same thing. They're saying it's time to get out of the tomb. You've discovered all that you need to discover, that there is an offer of life, and you are not meant to stay in this tomb anymore. Because in the tomb, there's only darkness, there's only emptiness, emptiness there's only death in the tomb. There is no life in here. It's time to move. You need to leave the tomb. There's nothing for you. And many of us today, God is saying the same thing to us. It's time to leave leave our tomb. The tomb doors open. The reality of Jesus is real. The gospel is truth. It's time to get up and walk out of our tomb. We need to leave the tomb of negativity. Many of us have negativity that life will always be this way or the tomb of anxiety of what will t tomorrow look like or even the tomb of a relationship hoping that one day they'll change, staring at disappointment and pain when the reality of life is outside of the tomb. We've got to leave, and the door has been opened, and Jesus is alive. You know, Micah 7.8 says this, Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord is my light. Now, this is a prophecy, right? This is, scholars believe, this is around about 700 years before Jesus walked the earth. And now, this is a prophecy of Jesus' resurrection, but equally, Right now, in this moment, this is a prophecy and a promise of the resurrection of you, the resurrection of me. Though we fall, though we mess up, though we fall into sin, though we mess up and make mistakes, because of the reality of Jesus, we can rise. That we don't have to try and dress the dead like the women did. We don't have to try and cover up our mistakes. We don't have to try and cover up our past because God doesn't just cover us. God gives us a new beginning and a new start. It is all found in the resurrection of Jesus. And this is good news today because here's the truth. If Jesus can interrupt the automated cycle of death, then don't you think he can interrupt the automations in your life? The things that you think can't change, the things you think can't shift. He is a God who interrupts automations. That is who he is. Only God can cause life to come from dead things. I find it so interesting that the tomb, the location of the tomb was in a garden showing me this, that Jesus wasn't a dead man buried. No, he was a dead man planted. And God would do the same thing with the things that we surrender, that we may think it's been planted in soil that can't grow. But here's the truth. Anything surrendered to God, God can cause it to grow. God can cause it to change. And that's good news today because that means each and every one of us watching this today has the same potential to be everything that God's called us to be because he has resurrection power today. Man, this is good news at Easter that what you feel is irreversible, what you feel is stuck, what you feel can't change. It all can because Jesus defied the grave. 1 Peter 1.3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy, his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I love that, that we have a living hope now because of the resurrection. You know, I love, I love to watch movies on planes. I don't know about you, but um, <clears throat> I'm always trying to find something new. What, what can I watch? And I, I remember I was on a plane and I'm scrolling through and I saw a classic section. And so I, w I just went for it. And you gotta understand, I, I sometimes, I could be a bit emotional sometimes watching a movie. I'm like, I don't care, I'm going for it. Guess what I watched? I watched the Titanic, mm -hmm. I went there, I did it. I watched the classic and now before I go any further, I just need to clear something up. Let's hit pause for a moment. There was enough space on the door 
for both Jack and Rose. I'm just putting it out there because we all know that. We all know that. But as I was watching this, that scene, that iconic scene, and spoiler alert, the ship sinks. Like, that's what happens. But we see this moment where Jack and Rose, two lovers, as they're in this frozen waters, as the ship is sunk, and, 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 and Rose is on, uh, on a raft, which is a door, and she's on this raft, and Jack's in the water, and, and, and he's pushing it, and they have this romantic dialogue and, 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 and Jack looks at Rose and he's shivering because he's in the water and he looks her in the eyes and he says, promise me, promise me even if it looks hopeless you'll survive. I'm like, man, that's a big promise, right? <laughs> that's a huge promise. And then this is Rose's response as so she's holding on to Jack's hand. She says, she says, I'll never let go as she's letting go. Like she's, she's letting go of Jack. She's letting go because of the circumstances around her. She's letting go because she's in this cold water. She's letting go because the girl cold. And see, we can respond the same way with hope that so often we're holding on to hope even right now in the pandemic that we're in right now. We've been holding on to hope with everything within us, but often because of the circumstances surrounding, we let go of hope. But here's the truth. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, our hope is now alive. It has a pulse. It has a name. And so when you let go of hope, hope won't let go of you. When you talk yourself out of hope, hope will talk you back into hope. That's the good news of Jesus that we now walk day in, day out with a hope that is alive, that is personalized, that is calling us into a greater life. This is great news today. And the scripture goes on and it talks that it has caused us to be born again. The resurrection causes us to be born again, that imagery of a baby. You know, if you were to ever ask a baby, like, hey, baby, when it's fresh, come out. Fresh, I mean, fresh out of the oven, like a piece of bread. <laughs> it comes out and you say, hey, baby, tell me about your past. Can you just let me into how the last two, three weeks have panned out for you in the womb? Did you hear what I was talking about? Did you, did you hear the music I was playing? Uh, I think the baby respond like this. Wah! <laughs> That's the only response you're going to get. I don't think a baby can remember that far back. And that imagery is so intentional from God because he wants you to know that once you are in Jesus, once you are a follower of God, once you have accepted his incredible great mercy as we've read, as we've accepted his grace and we have walked in his forgiveness, then our past has no power over us anymore. That we are not bound by what we've done. We're not bound by our mistakes. God is more concerned in our next decision than our last mistake. That is the reality of being born again. And each and every one of us, whether we are born again or whether you're watching right now, and for you, you would say, I, I'm not born again. I've never made that decision to follow God. Here's the truth. In a moment, wherever you are watching, that can happen for you. That your past can be severed from you. That God does not dissolve your past, but He just resolves your future. And that can happen for you today in a moment. And I'm believing that each and every one of us on this Easter Sunday, and I'm telling you, it is a memorable Easter Sunday with what we're going through, but we would remember this truth, that the tomb is empty, that Jesus is alive, and he is calling us out of our tomb today. He's saying the door has been left open intentionally so that you can witness my resurrection, but equally you'd understand that you are no longer in the tomb. You're out of the tomb. You've left the tomb. Your grave clothes are folded up so the world would say, is that who you used to be? Now you gotta understand for me, I became a believer when I was 15 years old. I was a drug dealer, I was broken, I was involved in crime and violence in the streets of London. And God said to me, I didn't have to be the way I was. That there could be a hope and a future for me that was greater than what I was walking in. That I could walk out of my tomb, come back to life. And now my tomb door is wide open for the world to see my story and that my story is his story. And so today, I would love to give you an opportunity 
ability to connect with this saving God, this God who so loves you, this God who gave his life for you, this God who came back from the grave for you so you could be in relationship with him. And this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to pray a very simple prayer just in a moment. I want you, if you're saying today, Daryl, on Easter Sunday, I know I need to come into a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you've walked away from him, but you're saying on Easter Sunday, Daryl, I know I need this God. I need to come back into a relationship with him. Simply, we're going to pray this prayer. And if you're saying, that's me, Daryl, on Easter Sunday, I just want you to pray it wherever you are, just loud enough that you can hear it. So come, let's close our eyes. Let's close our eyes. Father, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for your sacrifice of your son dying on a cross for me. Today, I believe that he is alive and I choose to follow him. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you made a decision to follow Christ today, we are so, so excited and we want to do this journey with you. There are two things you can do. Right now, why don't you let someone know in our live chat? Or you can go to our website, elevationchurch.com.au and fill in a red card. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you have an incredible Easter Sunday with your family and we look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place.